Hello everyone, this is Ron again with another episode of Strangely Normal, and today I'm taking a look at a game that when it came out was actually quite, quite popular, but um, it actually spawned a number of sequels, but in recent years has really um, kind of disappeared altogether um, on the scene, and when that is, uh, as you're seeing on here, that is uh, Desert Strike. Um, it's a game where you fly around a helicopter and blow up stuff. Um, as you probably saw go up by on the screen, it was released in 1992, and actually at the time, this game was immensely popular, uh, got great reviews, and, um, and was praised for a lot of things that at the time were actually quite innovative, um, especially considering uh, just what was out at the time, um, as, as, as I'll be seeing here. Okay, I'm going to get right into this here. And then here, um, you can actually select, um, there are different, these different co-pilots. I have never actually ever seen what real difference they make, aside from some, from some very basic things. Okay, let's, let's get right into this here. And, uh, this one, you actually have a bunch of missions, and you're just dropped into an area, and you have to complete them. Um, they have a suggested order, but you don't have to complete it in that order. And, uh, that was actually one of the things that at the time was, was very innovative. So it was a it was a non-linear uh, gameplay, especially considering the fact this game is kind of shoot 'em up because you fly around in a chopper and blow a lot of things up. Okay, I've actually played this first level a lot, so I know what all the missions are. Okay, I just started here. You go here. We see the map screen. Here is where you basically have all your information. Um, at the up at the top, you have the ammo for your various weapons, your guns, which is a machine gun, your hydras, which are rockets, and then hellfires, which are missiles. You have uh, fuel. That is constantly decreasing as the mission goes on. If that runs out, you crash. you got to find fuel drums to replenish it. Uh, armor, that goes down. Uh, if you get hit, goes down to zero, you die. Load, um, you can actually pick people up in this game, and there are, and there are uh, friendly soldiers you can pick up. And um, you actually take them back to a landing zone, and that's actually one of the ways you can get repaired is by taking soldiers back to a landing zone. It actually ups your armor if you're damaged. And then, of course, the number of lives and a score. And then here is just a map. It actually has all, all my various missions. I got to destroy some radar sites, power station, airfields, command centers, secret agent. That's some guy you got to find. Right now you don't know. You have to um, actually find out his location over the course of the mission. And then, and then these things here are actually various things on the map. Um, if I hit B here, it actually it actually describes what what that thing is. So here it says VDA. It says that dot right there. I hit B which says mission, but it actually is just more detail. It, says, it actually says the kind of thing that it is. Rapiers, um, though their uh, anti-aircraft missiles are actually pretty dangerous. Uh, any aircraft guns. These are MIAs. These, these are the friendly soldiers you can pick up and take back to get, to actually get um, your armor increased and, of course, points, things like that. And then the fuel drums. So in that way, if you're getting low on fuel, you know where the nearest supply of fuel is. Ammo crates to uh, replenish your ammo. And the landing zone is where you take people back to and then back to the missions. And there's also a little screen here where um, it just just basically has uh, the status of everything. It's just a little status screen. Okay. So according to this, first thing I should do is blow up these radars, which is actually helpful, um, believe it or not. If you take out these, these two radars, it actually makes it harder for the enemy to hit you. Okay. Now, see, as you see right there, I just, and I just actually just kind of flew around and did that. Uh, e each of this uh, helicopter's weapons are mapped to to one of the buttons on the Genesis controller. Oh, yes, I guess I didn't mention that this was released on the Sega Genesis. And it actually and it actually makes it mu pretty easy to just kind of zi zip around and fire off your weapons. Um, the, the, the interesting thing ab about the control in this game is that it was actually um, designed to control like like how one would think a, a helicopter would control, and um, and if you play it like that, it plays very well. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, there are other control schemes that I guess are more traditional. I tried them; they actually don't work very well. Um, they make the game very difficult. If you play it like this and you actually try to fly it around like like you think how a helicopter. Would, would 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 be flown around it actually works pretty well and and it actually kind of feels like you're actually an apache attack helicopter kind of just going around shooting rockets at things mission one completed next is a power station I need to check my stuff here 
Okay, I think I should be able to do that. What's my armor? My armor is still pretty good. And then uh, actually these these tents here, there's like buildings and stuff, and those sometimes have fuel drums or ammo crates um, hidden in them. Let's see, gonna fly up here. I did I, I, I did play this game for a couple of days prior to doing this, and at first it was very, very difficult. Um, difficult to control and uh, and very difficult to play. It just really um, the, the, the idea that it actually kind of sort of has this, I guess, almost, I don't even want to say necessarily like physics based, but just it feels like a helicopter. Um, it was so, m something uh, very different to me. Once I started to get the hang of it, and started realizing that I should probably at least ma make an attempt to pretend like I'm flying through a helicopter, then then it actually started to work a lot better. And uh, I actually feel that 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 is actually a pretty big accomplishment, um, rather than just kind of sticking with uh, a typical sort of top-down uh, shooter thing. Uh, one thing on this though, that probably isn't the best and uh, could most definitely be improved is uh, like the strafing. Um, the strafing doesn't work very well. You, you actually have to hold down the same button as you would for for firing your your Hellfire missiles, which are your strongest weapon. You have to hold it down, and then when you do that, it, it isn't even like it orients to like the way your plane is facing. It's just you do left, and the helicopter will go left based on where its front is. So like right now, I'm going I'm going right and left, no problem. But let's say I turn this way, and I want to, and, and I want to go up and down. I I hit up and down. I'm going forward and back. I it's actually still left and right. Which yes, that's correct for the cockpit, but for a shooter, probably not the best. Oh, I'm getting low on fuel. Good thing there's a fuel drum right here. Actually, I need to find an ammo crate. Okay, there's one nearby. And then I did also mention that there were sequels. There was Jungle Strike, Soviet Strike and uh, nuclear strike um, this game spawned a large number of sequels uh, ju jungle strike is, uh, is a very good game I didn't really play much beyond that the series kinda went downhill and then the final game in the series was actually supposed to be called future strike but it actually wound up turning into um, future cop LAPD which was like a mech based shooter uh, very strange on that Let's see, we should have an ammo crate in here, here we go Okay, yeah, let me just pick that up. Okay, now I'm going to try and do my next mission. These airfields, they're actually a little bit hard to do because they're pretty well defended. I had to make sure I had full ammo for that. Okay, usually these, you, you, you usually need to kind of dive in, hit the heavy hit the heavy artillery, and then just kind of blow the base up. Like those guys, oh man, those those things right there, uh, the things that, that, that look like... Um, a corn tower or something. These, oh man, they hit you hard. These guns, um, they can hit you hard if a, if a lot of them fire on you at once. Those guys, you don't want to make them. You don't want to let them get into the planes. I think. And then you just kind of blow up these planes. I just shoot them up. Saves, saves ammo. Okay. And uh, and as I mentioned at the time, uh, this game is actually not non-linear. I can I can go and do the other missions in whatever order I want. If I wanted to go and attack those command centers, I could. If I want to just take some time and go and find MIAs and rescue them, um, I could do that. Which at the time, something that really really wasn't heard of, especially on consoles, um, having having a kind of game where it was just like, oh hey, here you are. You're just put in this area. You need to complete these things. Um, and then when you're done, hey, you'll go on to the next level. A um, lot of fun. And um, and also, I haven't mentioned, uh, this game, of course, has obvious ties to the Gulf War. Um, which is actually kind of funny, because the game actually started its development before the Gulf War. And in fact, uh, was originally meant to be based on, on the Lebanese c Civil War. Um, which is, I know, a very different setting for it. And then this, you know, this one has a I did that because of that tower when you blow it up as a guy with a rocket launcher. But anyway, um, it was going to be based on uh, the Lebanese Civil War, and they changed it to a uh, Persian Gulf setting. And um, and so many people seem to think 
that dude, that dude at the Times or whatever, which was kind of like a cash in on the Gulf War, which isn't entirely true. And then, uh, and then there's some also some 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 interesting notes about about the development of this game. Um, one one of the people who actually helped work on the game sprites, um, at the time he was asked to help work on this, so that's Tim Calvin. He was a dentist. He was a practicing dentist who had experience with 3D modeling, and um, the head of the team developing this game, uh, Mike Poson, uh, knew him and uh, and tapped him to actually make the models. If you look at this game, you'll probably notice a lot of them kind of look like army men toys, things like that. That is actually by design. Um, the sprites were designed to look like toys, um, which is which I thought was really interesting considering the game itself and kind of like the subject matter, how 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 you are just a helicopter pilot going on doing this stuff. Um, I thought that was actually kind of neat, and and uh, and there was a lot of things with like points and stuff that changed. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and blow up the next airfield, and then I think I'll call it. We should have an ammo crate here. Um, and as I said uh, earlier at the time, just what this game did, there wasn't anything quite like this. I mean, I can't really think of of, of much other games at the time where it was just like, oh hey, you're just put into this area, you need to. You need to do all this stuff. And when I was a little kid and this came out, I mean, when this game actually came out, I was five. Um, I didn't play it until some years later, of course, when I was, like, seven or eight. But, I mean, just, you know, totally over my head, just in terms of of the controls and and what you had to do in it. But now that I go back to it, I'm actually, I'm actually really intrigued by it. And, um, and even though I did mention the controls were kind of strange at first, once you get used to them, they work pretty well, and it does actually really feel almost like you're 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 attempting to fly a helicopter, and and it works very well. Um, if you if you if you die if you just kind of go towards things and you're just like sh and you just come in and shoot missiles at them, um, works very well, and uh, the game tends to work best when you're doing that. Um, generally, you don't want to just kind of sit still and shoot and shoot at things. You want to usually dive bomb in and, and hit them. Okay, let's just whoop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna blow up this airfield and then I think uh, and then I think just to show you real quick uh, what happens when you. when you uh, take soldiers back. Oh, I'm getting shot at. I'm trying to avoid getting blown up because I want to just show you. I just want to show you because right now my armor is very low. And I, I just want to show you what happens when you drop guys off and it increases your armor. I'm going to pick up this fuel to make sure I can get back to the landing pad. And then also this this whole map thing, um, come to think of it, I can't really think of much else at the time that just had like a map that I could just hit a button just go and look at and get my bearings and be like, okay, I need ammo. Where's the nearest ammo crate? You know, I need fuel. Where's the nearest fuel drum? Just having that kind of information at your fingertips, uh, definitely for the time, very, very innovative. Um, and something that in these type of games, I really wish there was honestly a little bit more of, just because um, it's really nice to just be like, I need to go and do this, bam, and uh, and just get an immediate. Of course, there is no like direction indicator. Um, which I'm sure if this game were to, something like this would ever be made again, they'd need to have that, otherwise there'd probably be tons of complaints. But, um, but even still, you can navigate just fine. Okay, as you can see right now, this is my low to zero, I'm dropping them off right now, but as you can see, my armor is very low. Um, I'm, we're going to drop these guys off, and you're going to see that my armor is going to increase here. Let these guys take it off and run. Every looks so funny. Do, do, do. <laughs> then they get off, they run to the ship. Now my armor is back at 600. Um, if you stop in the middle of that, you you can actually see each one increase the armor. Let's pick up this ammo here. Same, same as I, I haven't blown up that airfield. Let's go blow that up. I said I was gonna I said I was gonna finish that and then uh, end this here. Let's get back over there. And uh, and that is one thing that I do actually really kind of praise this game for, despite the fact that um, that your screen size is actually pretty small. Um, the environments are distinct enough that it's actually fairly fairly easy to find your way around and navigate without getting just horribly lost or not knowing where you're going running out of fuel you know if you if you point yourself in the right direction you can just go right there
Oh, okay, finish that. I missed a plane. All right. Jeez, it's already been 15 minutes. Wow, actually, I think I'll make this one a little bit longer here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to... I need to go and attack command center here. This is actually going to be one of the harder portions here. We'll see if I die uh, on that. Okay. Whoop. Sorry about that. Um, screen went blank for a second there. Just probably just something in my... Whoa! Yeah, take that. Almost got hit by missiles. Those missiles hurt. They take a lot of your armor down, and you cannot last very long against them. Of course, sometimes you get situations like this. Okay, let's see here. Ugh. Yeah, actually running into buildings does decrease your armor. Okay, come on. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, ugh. And, and that's just one thing, you know, like I said, the feel of this game is great. Um, you know, you know, you just get your mo- Oh! There's an armor pickup right there, too. That's what happens when you blow up. But I'm not alive, so I come right back. Um, actually, hold up. I think I'm gonna end this with, with me running out of lives, just so I can show you, um, the game over screen. It's great, it's got great music. Okay, let's find the nearest. Okay. I'll just one of these. I'll let them blow me up a couple times here, and then I'll just uh, call it just after we see that. Okay. Okay. I shouldn't take these guys too long. I'll go go around to where the other to where the really hard hitting enemy is. He'll bring me down real fast. Yeah, he's bringing me down. Oh, I died. We'll die. We'll die one more time, and then we'll get to see the game over screen, which I think is just a, which I think is uh, is just a great game over screen on this. Come on, blow me up. Finish blowing me up. And I, and, and I know that right now I might probably make it look like your your helicopter's really tough. It's really not. You you get going. You get doing things. You realize how fragile your helicopter really is. There's the game over screen and uh, the great music on this, which is which is a uh, which is always just I just think it's great, um, like funny. It has almost this almost like Top Gun sort of feel to it. Um, but anyways, uh, that Desert Strike, uh, it's a great game. A little bit hard to pick up, but once you do, a lot of fun to play. Um, believe it or not, I have actually made it past the first level in this game. It's pretty difficult to do that. It looks like it restarted. We're just going to pause that and finish this out. Um, let's, uh, with this, um, I, th I think this has been uh, re-released on collections. I know it got re-released on uh, Game Boy Advance and uh, as, uh, as well as some of the sequels. Um, I, would, I would really like to, to see them maybe go back to this and remake it, possibly in HD with some very nicer sprites, or even make a new one that's still kind of 2D-ish, um, but, but with very similar uh, controls and systems. I just think that it would be would be an interesting idea but then again um, I don't know uh, the, f the flight genre in general hasn't been faring too well as of late uh, with that and um, and I also wonder if maybe people wouldn't want kind of, kind of a third person helicopter perspective which I mean would be all right but I just just this whole like it really feels like you know you're just like commanding this chopper and you're just in a battlefield doing things I think I think that if it was done appropriately and it really had that sense of you know here's all the info here's your stuff you know plan out your attack and do it I think it could be a really big success um, so uh, that's it for this week um, thank you very much again uh, f for watching uh, stay tuned for uh, next week's episode on that and of course as usual if you like like the video any comments or suggestions always greatly welcome um, there is a Facebook group. You can send me an email. I'll have those posted on there as well as uh, f and follow me on Twitter. And um, thank you very much once again, and I will see all of you next week.